Welcome to TechWizard Design. In this video, we are going to learn how to enable Azure Active Directory authentication for Azure SSIS IR for Azure SQL database. So, what we want to do, we want to create a SSIS DB and use on Azure SQL database, and our authentication for our SSIS IR is going to be Azure Active Directory. So, let me take you to that post that we are going to use in this scenario. So, right here, you see enable Azure. AD authentication for Azure SSIS IR. So uh, here's the deal as of now. Uh, you think about that you have not created uh, your Azure SSIS IR and uh, you are going to create that and uh, you would like to use uh, Azure Active Directory authentication in that case so, so that's why we are going to follow this uh, document now one of the thing uh, uh, your uh, SSIS DB is going to be created on uh, Azure SQL database so, so that's uh, the uh, one thing you also want to do we have another video where I created the SSIS uh, uh, IR um, with uh, uh, this uh, AAD authentication uh, and uh, we created SSIS DB on manage instance uh, so you can watch that video as well uh. so this article explains both of the scenarios uh. so the very first scenario is uh, creating your SSIS IR on your uh, ADF uh, by using AAD uh, with the uh, uh, Azure SQL database uh. so that's what we are going to do here so uh, see right there enable Azure AAD authentication on your Azure SQL database okay and it tells us uh, first of all you have to create the ID group uh, and uh, then uh, you have to add the user to it and all those kind of things uh, so I'm not gonna go through this uh, uh, PowerShell and all that but I would like to do all these steps uh, from the portal itself uh. now first of all uh, what we need uh, we need our user okay and uh, that's gonna be our uh, Azure Active Directory user second part uh, we are gonna create a group uh, uh, that uh, we will add that user to it um, and then uh, we will add uh, also our manage identity for our data factory where we will uh, add that object ID to the group as well uh, once all that part is done we are going to give a permission to our uh, user on the Azure SQL database and make him sysadmin so we can go and uh, then perform uh, these queries that there so we are going to create a user for that our group uh, and uh, then we are going to provide the permission and then finally we will go and create our SSIS DB so let's start to one step at a time so the very first step is going to be uh, we will uh, create uh, um, our AAD Azure Active Directory user okay and uh, I'm going to name that one Amir so let's go right here and uh, here is my act portal and as of now what I have just we want to show you guys first of all I have Azure Data Factory that's totally blank I don't have anything on that this data factory and the uh, other item uh, I need uh, is uh, uh, my SQL uh, uh, database so see right here I have tech res IT that's uh, my database server and uh, or database and uh, if you go back to the server here uh, this is uh, the tech res server so this is Azure SQL database so, and uh, I have connected to this uh, by using uh, my SSMS and you can see that as of now it is holding only one uh, database. Uh, that's where we would like uh, to create our SSIS uh, DB. So there are only two objects, uh, our Azure SQL database uh, and second part our data factory is ready. Rest of that everything we are going to do by ourselves. Uh, and uh, you know how to create the data factory I have many videos on that and you know how to create Azure SQL database so I have many videos on that part as well so we don't have to repeat again now the very first step I was saying we need to create our user so I'm gonna go on these three dots here and then now we are gonna go to the our Azure Active Directory and here I'm gonna call go to user tab and I'm going to create our user so today we will be creating our user and let's call that user Bob okay so Bob is my best friend actually so Bob and then his first name I'm gonna call it Robert and the last name Ladson so that's his name and now Robert Ladson and that's it now we will be creating the uh, what you call the the password here so I'm going to provide the password Okay, that uh, let me retype the password so I don't remember because sometimes 
we don't remember the password okay so bob is ready and uh, we go ahead and create uh, this user and uh, you guys can see that uh, bob or robert, robert ladson is a uh, uh, user is created uh, now second part i'm going to go back to the di directory here and go to the groups uh, and here i'm going to create our group uh, and so the group name is going to be uh, security is fine and i'm going to call this one uh, tb uh, group uh, so very simple name and the group description okay tb group for testing or for uh, ssis ir and uh, let's create uh, the group uh, that was quick uh, so successfully created and uh, let's refresh and we should see our group right there uh, all groups uh, i've seen that is created but i'm not seeing that right now uh, anyways let's go back here and uh, all groups again let's go back to default directory let's see the user first so we have the user robert ladson here and uh, let me go back here go to the groups uh, and uh, i should see the tb user tb group see right there that's a tb group huh? and that's fine now i'm going to click on tb group and i'm going to do a couple of things first thing uh, i'm going to add member okay in this member i'm going to add uh, our member called bob so I'm going to search for Bob. It's not finding. Let's see all members. We don't have any. Uh, let me add that directly. So go back to the directory here. Go to users. And we are going to copy the name. So I'm going to copy this Bob. That's my user. Go to default directory again. Go to group. And here we will be adding this as member. Now search add members and here we can search see i was searching actually wrong place uh, these are one uh, for existing users um, so i was supposed to add user and then find robert ladson or bob that's fine sometime happen so member member has been added successfully second part of what you want to add you want to add the active uh, sorry your azure data factory object id here so you want to because uh, we are going to provide some permissions and all that so we are going to go to the uh, our let's say let me take you to the resource group let me refresh this and uh, i'm going to find my data factory so here's my data factory and uh, what i need to do i need to go to properties and in the properties i need to find object id so manage identity object id that's what i'm going to copy and i'm going to go back to the uh, group here and in membership and add member so here i'm going to paste that and uh, that should find my tech versus adf now let's select that and that has been added as well now we can refresh and we should see that uh, in just a few seconds uh, we are going to see this uh, there should be two members in this group uh, let's go to the default directory and here uh, let me find the user so bob uh, that's the user we need to make sysadmin remember that we need to add some uh, or we need to run some uh, scripts uh, and that's only possible if we will uh, use uh, this uh, as active directory sysadmin on the azure sql uh, database so, so i'm copying this i'm going to go back to my portal and here i'm going to go to the uh, server uh, right there tech brothers database server uh, right here and then uh, i'm going to go right there and i uh, see right there i mean this is my tech brothers it server and uh, then i'm going to go to azure active directory and here i'm going to say set to admin and i'm going to search for bob so i search for bob i found bob and now I'm going to select Bob and uh, save him. Now, what's going to happen, uh, this user will become uh, the sysadmin on our Azure SQL database. Um, so it looks good. This came green. Uh, that's fine. Also, meanwhile, I'm going to take you back uh, and uh, just uh, show you our TB group should have uh, two users. Uh, remember, we uh, added two users. One is uh, our uh, data factory and uh, then the other one is our user Bob. So if I go to members, there you can see both of them right there. This come as a service principle, the ADF and the Robert come as a user. Okay, that looks fine. Now we are all done with our creating user group and providing a permission to the Robert as a sysadmin on our Azure uh, SQL database. Now next part of what we need to do, we need to connect to our um, 
Azure SQL Server and uh, then uh, use that user. So I'm going to go to the database engine and here I'm going to select tech versus IT database.windows.net and instead of uh, providing my SQL authentication here I'm going to go with the universal with MFA and here I'm going to provide uh, that user Bob at the rate uh, HSR that's my account. Now let's sign in uh, by using uh, Universal uh, with the MFA and uh, we should be good to go and uh, we are going to provide uh, our password here and uh, now let me sign in. Now we are going to provide our current password and then uh, what we will do we will uh, provide the new password. Okay. That looks good and now what we are going to do we are going to skip for 14 days. Uh, that should do it and uh, I should be able to log in. Um, now I am logged in here to my Azure SQL database uh, by using my user called Bob and Bob is a sysadmin. Uh, if you go to security and uh, see the logins uh, uh, we have only same TB user uh, that's our SQL login uh, but uh, we also uh, as uh, in the portal if you guys remember in the portal we have uh, went to the our server and uh, we made our AAD account uh, as the sysadmin. So see right there, we set the admin, so that's why we are able to log in uh, to the Azure SQL database. Um, that looks great. Uh, now let's take a look on the documents. Uh, so if you guys see that we have done all these steps, so we didn't use the PowerShell, we created the group, uh, we created the, um, and uh, we added our user to the group, and uh, we have done that part. We also did uh, configure this uh, Active Directory admin, and we set admin. We have done that too, and uh, we have also done this part. Uh, now we have logged in uh, into our uh, MFAs and all that. That's done, and the last part, couple of parts we have to do this one. Now what we have to do here, we have to copy this script and then we are going to go right there to our database and execute. Um, so here I paste that uh, query and uh, once uh, I paste it there and uh, here we will be um, providing our group name. So in our case uh, it was a TB group. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and execute this uh, statement and this is completed successfully. Now next part what we need to do here we have to provide uh, or add this uh, group uh, as a member of DB manager. Uh, so once it has that uh, it will be able to create SSIS DB and the other uh, items it need to do for SSISIR. So I'm going to go right there, paste this query as well, and uh, here uh, on this uh, user that we just created, that was actually our group, uh, I'm going to paste it right there and make him a part of a DB manager. So once I made him a part of a DB manager group role, uh, it will be able to create the database and all that. Um, as of now, there is no SSIS DB or anything like that here. If you go to the users and uh, you double click on TB, user, uh, TB group, uh, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, you're going to see some properties. So let's uh, actually, it's not bringing the properties here. So maybe that's weird. Mostly in SSIS, uh, sorry, in a SQL server, we always open and see the properties, but not here. Anyways, so uh, that is there. Uh, this user is there as well. Uh, and uh, this was uh, created, added by as a sysadmin from the portal, if you guys remember that. And this is the one we just added uh, here and provide him a permission. Uh, now this is uh, all fine uh, and uh, our final steps are getting there and we are going to go work on our uh, ADF side. Now we are here in uh, ADF, I'm going to open the studio and uh, finally I will be creating uh, our SSISIR. SSI Let's click on manage and here uh, we'll go to the integration, run times uh, and uh, you can see right there we don't have anything as of now and uh, just we have auto resolve that comes with ADF uh, itself. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, running and fine but we need to create uh, our Azure SSIS uh, lift and shift one. So I'm going to click right there and uh, go to the name. I'm going to provide SSISIR. And uh, here, uh, East US is just fine. Uh, node uh, size is going to be two cores, uh, 8 GB RAM. And uh, I'm going to hit uh, continue. And now here, uh, we will be providing uh, some information. Create SSIS DB catalog hosted by the Azure SQL database server many instance to, to store your project packages environment ex and uh, execution logs so in our case uh, we will be creating our ssis db that will be on azure sql database 
and uh, we are using our subscription here east us is just fine because that's where my uh, databases are and uh, in the catalog uh, tech browser it database dot windows dot net uh, that's our azure sql database so, and now we are going to click on uh, use the aad authentication um, see here it is asking you hey what the user you want to use uh, to connect to this uh, um, so uh, see uh, Azure SQL DB. So I'm not going to use the admin account uh, such as uh, my uh, username and password that I create used uh, when I was creating this uh, Azure SQL database. So I'm going to use AAD. Why? Because uh, that's uh, what we are all doing it. Uh, so we don't have to provide our uh, username and password. Uh, instead of we will be using Active Directory authentication for our data factory integration runtime now that looks fine and uh, what we can do here you can uh, select the basic probability is just fine and uh, test connection test is successful that's great and I'm gonna hit next and uh, I'm gonna run two jobs parallel in that uh, uh, SSISIR node if uh, we run the SSIS packages that looks fine and uh, now this is our summary that looks fine as well and uh, we don't have to worry about anything else we are gonna hit create and it should uh, create our SSISIR so this is creating our Azure SSISIR and uh, we have used the uh, Act Azure Active Directory uh, to authenticate against our Azure SQL database um, and uh, that's where our SSISDB will be created uh. now this depends uh, uh, with the many instance uh, it took 37 minutes uh, to create uh, the SSISDB and all that uh, and create the SSISIR but uh, with the Azure SQL database I have seen that uh, sometimes it's quick uh, it's between 5 to 10 minutes uh. so we'll see how much time it takes uh, but uh, again, um, you know, it's pretty easy and quick uh, if you don't uh, get into some errors. If you get into some errors, that's uh, another story, you know. So uh, we'll come back once it's started and I will show you. So our finally SSIS IR is ready and running. Let's go ahead and take a look how much time it took. It took almost 11 minutes, uh, you know, to start. Not bad. Now we can, um, we are all good here. If we want to create uh, some SSIS packages and run through the ADF, we should be just fine. Now let me take you back uh, to my Azure uh, SQL database. And here uh, we are going to refresh and uh, then uh, uh, we are going to take a look on the database and uh, here we have SSISDB. So it's ready to take your SSIS packages. You can uh, go ahead and deploy and uh, now create the projects or, uh, you know, folders and everything. And uh, you should be good to go. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope uh, this video will help. Uh, I will put the link of this document in the description. But uh, as I said that, uh, you might get confused with a lot of uh, this PowerShell and all those kind of things. Uh, so go forward. Uh, take a look on the video, pause it first. Uh, you will create the user, create the group, and uh, then uh, add that user to the group, uh, and then also a add your your data factory by using object ID to the group. Uh, once that's done, you're gonna provide uh, the uh, make that user. In our case, it was Bob, uh, the sys admin or set admin on the uh, Azure SQL. Uh, uh, database uh, so we did that and uh, then once you do that it will have a lot of permissions uh, so you're going to connect to your uh, uh, database and uh, then uh, by using MFA the first time I remember where I was trying to log in and I have problem with the login and because I forgot my password or something and then uh, finally you will run these commands uh, and after that uh, you will go to the uh, Azure Data Factory and create your uh, SSISIR as we did uh, and uh, completed right in front of you so thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe my channel and I will see you guys in the next video.